Well, welcome back friends. Today, I want to focus on something that I promised you several weeks ago, which is a podcast about essential oils and lung health. I feel this is a really important topic right now for three main reasons. Number one, we're going into fall. Fall means that from a traditional Chinese medicine standpoint, our organs of focus have changed into our metal element organs, one of those being the lungs. So the healthy lungs are a huge part of our immune system. Second reason is that forest fires are still causing a lot of smoky conditions throughout a lot of the United States. And with that comes particular challenges with our lungs in terms of comfort, feeling like we can breathe and things like that. And then the third reason why I feel like this is a very important topic is because of COVID-19 and the fact that a lot of people are having real troubles with the heavy gunk that is sort of the tail end of this challenging virus and are not really knowing what to do to help with that. So today I'm going to give you some of my personal thoughts on lung health and essential oils. And once again, this is never meant to be construed as medical advice. Aromatherapy does not treat, diagnose, or cure any disease. However, it is potentially something that is supportive to the body when the body is going through challenges or is looking for some extra edge or leverage. So when we're talking about essential oils that are for the lungs, we can take a step back and look at a bigger picture here. And that bigger picture is something called the law of signatures. The law of signatures is a principle that has been used for hundreds of years to help determine when we encounter a plant in nature, what it will be good for in the body. And it's actually really simple. It's the shape. It's the shape of the plant. Now this is very subjective at times, um, but if we look at the lungs. Let's look at and let's think about the anatomy of the lungs. The lungs are these two lobes and there is a tube that comes from our throat, branches out and brings the air into those two lobes of the lungs. When that tube of air branches into the lungs, it literally branches out into a whole bunch more little branches and twigs and things. And at the very end of those are almost like leaves called alveoli. And those cells help to bring the oxygen into our bloodstream. So we can think of the lungs almost like being an upside down tree. And what that might mean is that tree essential oils are going to be helpful for lung health in general. And that is in fact what we find. So if we look at a category of essential oils that is called the respiratory essential oils, most of those essential oils are going to be from trees. Personally, I really love conifer species, especially for, for lung health. And so I wanted to share with you my three favorites and then one additional that you may not have heard of before. And then at the end, I want to just um, bring some additional information about the specific challenges that we're looking at at this particular point in time. So the first essential oil that I really love for lung health is called silver fir. So a lot of people think conifer essential oils and they think that it's going to smell like pine salt, right? So if you're a person that doesn't like the smell of pine salt, you might think that you don't prefer the scent of conifers from an essential oil standpoint. I feel like silver fir is one that is about as opposite as you can get from a pine smell and still be within the conifer family. It is light. It is bright. There's a little bit of sweetness to it. It's not overpowering. So if you're a person that also is not loving real strong scents, silver fir would be a great one. Silver fir is also going to be safe to be inhaled by most people, meaning that if you're in a family setting, living in a home, and you're looking for ways to build that community immunity, as David Crow talks about, that the silver fir is one that you could diffuse from time to time that would help to facilitate deeper breathing, would help to clear junk out of the air, and would help help just to be soothing to the respiratory tract. Same thing if people have coughs, this is going to be a great one. Second essential oil that I really love for lung health, just general lung support, is any 
variety of spruce. Now my absolute favorite is red spruce, but it's not one that is available on a commercial basis. You have to know a distiller to get it. And luckily I have inroads with some. And so I get a little bit of tiny bit of red spruce and it's like a very precious gem to me. It is the sweetest smelling conifer ever. If you can't get your hands on that, Black spruce is an amazing substitute. So black spruce to me has more body to it than a silver fir would. It's gonna have a little bit more of a sense of strength to it without being overpowering. It has um, a, a little bit of a minty quality in my opinion in part of the scent profile as you're experiencing it. So it's a little bit more cooling, effervescent sort of feeling. Also gonna be great for the lungs, supporting healthy respiration. The third essential oil that I really, really love for lung health is pinyon pine. And this, I could not believe when I first met pinyon pine that it was even pine because it does not smell like a household cleaner at all in my opinion it smells like when you're walking in a dry area like a desert or here we have the black hills of north dakota in the summer and you're walking by the pine trees how their how their saps and their resins smell in the air pinon pine is like the sweetest sweetest version of that you can imagine of these three essential oils, pinyon pine is probably going to be the most expensive because it's uh, it's a tree that is not overly prolific in the world. So there's less population of the tree to go into making the essential oil. I find pinyon pine to be extremely soothing to the lungs. This is something that we would call balsamic, meaning that it is going to help calm down inflamed lung tissue and help to support just a better sense of comfortable feeling in our body when it comes to wanting to have better respiration or if our lungs are having some challenges. So those are the top three conifer essential oils that I would recommend for healthy respiration. There are many others to choose from and with aromatherapy again so often this is going to be your personal preference but I would encourage you to take some time to get to know these essential oils. I believe I have silver fir on my website prairiearomatherapy.com under fluorocopia essential oils if you want to try that one. Um, black spruce you can source from a lot of different places. Pinyon pine is also a fluorocopia essential oil that's amazing. And then there's a final honorable mention that a lot of people don't know about, and that is an essential oil called bupleurum. Bupleurum is used typically for smoking cessation. It comes from the island of Corsica and as an herb has been used there for a long time to help support people that are wanting to quit smoking. It does not have in my opinion, the most pleasant scent as compared to the other conifers, but it does have the benefit of being very soothing and balsamic to the lungs. So when the lungs are trying to recover from any kind of a trauma or a smoke inhalation, this would be an essential oil that I would recommend using in a diffuser as part of a blend, not necessarily on its own. The scent of it to me it's a little bit like tobacco, but not in the sweet qualities, more in like the dry qualities of tobacco, if that makes any sense at all. And I do think that it is very effective for people that are working on smoking cessation to even put bupleurum in an aromatherapy inhaler and have that with them while they are, you know, maybe wanting to smoke, they can take out that inhaler and smell that scent. And I've been talking to smokers who find that scent very satisfying for them. For those of us that are not smokers that don't prefer that scent profile, you're not going to want to have the bupleurum be a large percentage of your blend. And all of these respiratory essential oils, the easiest mode of application for them is going to be in your diffuser. So when we're talking about respiration, obviously the easiest way to get the essential oils into our lungs is going to be to breathe them at healthy, safe amounts, which if you're putting anywhere from five to 10 total drops in your diffuser in a fairly large room from time to time, that is going to be safe for most people. Now, 
if essential oil blending is something that you're interested in, or actually if you're like really confused about it, like, okay, I have, I went to this party, I got these essential oils, I have no idea what to do with them. I have no idea how I would even blend them together. What if I'm gonna do something wrong? What if I waste it? Uh, I don't wanna do anything unsafe. I have something for you. I have a live class coming up on October 14th at 11 a.m. It's gonna be on Zoom virtually. It is a live class for one hour when I'm gonna be teaching you the method that I use to intuitively blend essential oils. So this is not going to be highly technical, but it is going to be highly practical and something that anyone can learn to do from home with the essential oils that you already have, whether they're the respiratory oils that I mentioned today or something completely different. And by the end of this course, you're going to understand the strengths of essential oils, how to blend them together, how to safely blend them together, and some other tips and tricks. And essentially, you will know how to make your own recipes by the end of this class. So I'm going to be putting a link for that in the show notes for you to be able to join us. Um, there's also going to be an advertisement in the show that will have a bit.ly link that you can go to if that is something that you want to check out and do not delay because class will fill up. So that is going to be helpful even for like knowing how to blend essential oils for your diffuser for home use. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about today is the two different situations that we have going on. So we have the challenge of the forest fires and the excessive amount of smoke particles that are in the air. And then we have the situation with COVID where people are dealing with really heavy gunk in their lungs. The way that we might deal with these situations is slightly different. And also opinions differ between aromatherapists on what is appropriate, particularly for a smoke inhalation situation as opposed to not doing anything at all. And the reason for that is that when we are exposed to smoke particles in excess, whatever that looks like, our body, our lungs actually protect themselves by creating some extra inflammatory response, in essence, causing swelling in the lungs. And, and, and in essence, what that does is it kind of closes the lungs down a little bit, which Yes, helps makes us feel like we have more labored breathing, but it may also mean that this is the body's protective response to keep from getting all of that smoke particle into the lungs. So there are some aromatherapists that will argue when we're in a forest fire situation, smoke inhalation situation, that we may not want to actually use essential oils such as our conifers, such as even something like the eucalyptus family that help to open up the lungs for respiration because the body's natural healing response to being exposed to those things is to close down to protect itself further. I think that there's a lot of wisdom in that thinking. However, in looking at a lot of my friends who live out West, the things that they're reporting about how uncomfortable they are in their bodies and in their lungs dealing with the excess smoke. I think there are some things that we can do to help soothe that at the appropriate times. So I would say when you know that you're done being exposed to the smoke for the day, whatever that looks like for you, once you're home, I would say, first of all, having a really great air purifier would be one thing that would really, really help to keep the interior air in your home cleaner so that you're not having as much irritation once you're home. I personally use an air, an air purifier called the Air Doctor. Don't have any affiliation with that company, but I do really like it. And that would be something that would be probably a step one when we're talking about this. The second thing is helping to rehydrate the lungs. A friend of mine had a fabulous idea and you don't even need essential oils for this. You can grab a couple branches of conifer, maybe some orange slices or lemon slices, and you can just simmer those in a simmer pot like on, on your stove or maybe you have a plug-in simmer pot for those types of potpourris that you might have. And she reported that when they were doing the simmer pot, when they were all home, that they noticed that their lungs stopped burning so much. So it helps with the hydration and there's gonna be a little bit of essential oil that are in those plant materials that also gets infused into the air through that process. Third step would be, if you do those two things and you're still really struggling when you're at home, 
I would recommend using some of these respiratory essential oils to help soothe that lung tissue, bring down a little bit of that inflammation while you're home for the night, when you're going to be ready to go into sleep. But then the converse of that would be in the morning when you're ready to go out, maybe not using those essential oils because we want the body to be able to use its natural inflammatory response to help protect you as you're going out into those elements. This is just my opinion and where my thoughts have landed at this time, subject to change as more research comes out and as I'm hearing more reports from other professional aromatherapists on how the different approaches are working for clients. Now, when it comes to something like COVID, we're looking at a very, very different type of situation. Here, we're looking at a situation where the inflammatory response in the lungs, particularly with making something called hyaluronic acid, has gotten completely out of control. There's so much acid being produced, and that's what that excess, some of that excess fluid, phlegm, that whatever you want to call it, in the lungs that happens with COVID that's how that's occurring. And it's very, very thick and it's hard for people to cough it and get rid of it. And there's lots of different techniques that a person might try. For instance, one of my contacts online has um, a disease, a chronic lung disease, and she has different percussive techniques that she uses just to even pound on her chest or her body to get that gunk loosened up and moving so that she can get rid of it every day. There's also breathing techniques that can be very helpful. And I think that even doing the yogic breathing where we're visualizing breathing way down into our body to really calm the breathing down and try to get it centered lower. One thing to know about the lungs is that the lung capacity is more the lower into the lungs that we get because the volume is greater and then more into the back of the body. It's almost like your lungs are scuba tanks just located inside your body. So we want to even visualize breathing into those spaces a little bit more fully rather than feeling like our breath is real high in our body up here by our collarbone and our shoulders. A little bit of singer's tr tricks for you there that you're getting. But when it comes to essential oils for COVID and the lungs, I do think that my opinion is <laughs> that using the essential oils that will help to break up that really tough mucus are ones that are definitely called for. And this can be in terms of using a diffuser or even a steamer, um, a steam treatment where you're breathing in some steam from a warm pot of water that has some essential oils in it, you know, for a minute or two at a time every few hours. The essential oils, especially in the respiratory family as well as in the eucalyptus family can be very useful for helping to break up that excess mucus and get it out. So as of now, my recommendation would be to support your lungs with essential oils for COVID. If there is ever a time in which essential oils are here for us as allies. I think it actually is with COVID. And that can also be in the form of amazing supportive teas from lung supportive plants like Tulsi, for example, would be a really great lung tonic tea to be drinking right now. There's lots of different possibilities with that, but in terms of how we would approach the lung issues with COVID versus lung issues with the forest fire situation. I think it actually takes two different approaches. And finally, I will say it also takes a large measure of your own body intuition to know what your body needs. Sometimes your body is going to be telling you that you need some extra support. Sometimes it's going to be telling you that instead of essential oils, you just need to sleep and rest. So really tuning in to help your body is so key at this time because I believe the body does have its own innate wisdom and will tell you if you're open to hearing what it most needs. So that is what I have for you today. Essential oils for lung health, those respiratory oils, the silver fir, the spruce species, the pinyon pine, and even the bupleurum can be so supportive to us as we have these challenges right now in our world. If this was helpful to you, I would love for you to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you have notifications turned on. Leave us those five-star reviews on your podcast app, and we'll 